What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. So today is panel build day. Um, I'm gonna be putting in the main switch, CTs, um, secondary meter kits. We've got our BS88 isolator up here as well. Um, so I'm just gonna be building all of the components and just prepping as much as we can because um, tomorrow is shut down. So UKPN are gonna come in, they're gonna isolate the supply to this DB. We're gonna um, get our 185 parallels in, get them made off. Um, and, and all that sort of stuff. So we need to be as prepared as possible um, this end. We've moved on a little bit as well. So I'll take you through that from the last video. Um, I had a day here and we didn't really film much, but yeah, trays in, trunking's all done. It's all put in there. We had um, one of our DNO friends come and get the supplies out of this panel while it was live um, with all the gear on and that. So that was really, really helpful. Um, and yeah, it's just moved on that little bit. So I'll show you all that. Before I do, I just wanted to mention today's video's sponsor, uh, Tradeify. So Tradeify is a job management software um, that really, really gets you organised, really, really helps you out. I've been using it for quite a while now, and it's a game changer since going back self-employed. Um, talking, quoting, invoicing, um, organising jobs, organising materials. You can set templates for jobs, templates for quotes. Um, chase your invoices automatically and all sorts of cool stuff. So I'll put the link to that below. Um, you can get a free trial, 14 day free trial, and if you use code residual, you'll get 50% off three months as well, so that's pretty cool. If you haven't already, guys, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It really, really supports the channel, and uh, yeah, let's get into the video. So this is where we're at. We've got a bit of 12 inch there, a um, load of core rolls through. We've got a little bit of 12 inch on the outside of this wall as well. So that's where those sub mains that were down there, we've pulled them out, they're just outside. Um, they're gonna get tied along and glanded in there. Trunking's all done as well. So we've got the lid on, ready to go. Um, panels all built, looking sweet, all packs lin through. And we've got this isolator up here, just been pushed through as well. That has got some BS88s and my level in it as well. <laughs> Um, and then this trunking comes all the way through and we've also slotted it up there. So we've got a nice big opening, grommet strip on, everything's ready to go. So yeah, we, uh, we're we gonna be building this panel. So over here I've got all my components and what have you laid out, 630 amp main switch, buzz bar links, uh, MCCBs and smaller metering kits, big metering kit. A um, bit of a funny story with this. So this is a Hager um, CT pack for the board, for the mains. Um, there is actually supposed to be an, another expansion chamber below the board um, and another little corner one that would fill in that gap. What happened was I read the instructions and said, rang Hager saying, you know, it says we need an enclosure and we haven't been supplied one with whoever designed this panel. And they told me that um, it wasn't needed, so I've just cracked on, mounted everything, and now I've come to looking at fitting this, and it turns out we do need it, so we had a load of drama with that. Um, but basically, the only thing we can do is take it off of its plate, which is somewhere, so we've just got it like so, and we're just going to mount it in the trunking like that, ready for the, the 185 parallels to pass through, and then jump onto the main switch. It's not ideal. Um, but yeah, it's the only way we could do it. We were looking at doing uh, the expansion chamber. It really weren't that hard to do either. It would have just been a case of unbolting this from the trunking below, sliding it up, and then all the slots and stuff were exactly the same, so everything would have lined up. The problem was, it's made to order, and it's a five day lead time, so that's just meant um, it would set us back, and we've got UKPM booked in, we've got all sorts, uh, we've got to be done by Friday. So yeah, as much as we, so as much as we wanted to do that, we just can't. And that's just the real life sort of <laughs> problems that you run into. But yeah, to be fair, the expansion chamber was just for the CT. So we'll put it in the trunking instead and that should solve that problem. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna start bolting on the main switch. We can talk it up, we'll get a torque wrench out, show you all that, um, how the CTs work. I'll try and explain that for you too. Um, and yeah, just show us building this panel up. So yeah, let's get to it. I'm just going to start by getting this main switch just mounted to the, um, the panel, to the carcass of the board. And then, um, yeah, once that's in place, I think we probably need to have a look at the CT, see where they bolt on, um, where like the metering kit bolts on, because that nicks its supply off the main switch, off the low side of that. So yeah, we'll see how that um, all works, and then yeah, we'll start getting that built, buzz bar in, and all that sort of stuff, getting it all talked up. 
Um, so yeah, go grab the switch. So this is um, basically a giant MCCB, um, which has a trip computer as well. So you can set the characteristics of you know how you want it to um, how you want it to work. So your you know your long your long trip time, your short trip time, all that sort of stuff. Um, as well as you can you can wind it down and wind it up and yeah just tune it up to, to what the installation requires um, I'll try and explain that I am familiar with it and the way it works but yeah some of it does go a bit over my head um, get these in Cool, so that's all in. Now, I'm gonna get the CT dim rail mounted here and see how long the tails are off of it um, and see, yeah, where that sort of goes in here. I think it's probably gonna go on these bolts, uh, maybe the top ones, but yeah, we'll just get it over and have a look. All right, so. fixings in this one apparently. Fair enough. So I've built um, I've built Proteus um, boards like this. Um, I've built Eaton ones and I've worked in Schneider ones but I've never built a Hager MCCB board like this. So it is all a bit of a learning curve for me. Um, they are all very similar but they also all do things in their own way. Um, so yeah, but this one seems pretty, pretty straightforward. So so far, anyway. All right, so that's locked in. So shut that down the back. Um, shut that down the back, ready to be tied in, and then these. So to be honest, I think it would be better if these were on the other side, but. Let's, um, let's have a little look. So, so I'm guessing that's got a little hole for these to go through. There, so they want to be tied. Tied on the back. Okay. So let's get sticky pads. We haven't got a four pole. We haven't got a four pole main switch. The neutral is going to want to go down there onto that probably. So let's get another pad. Soft. Um, let me get these tie wraps in together. Right, so I've got the CT cable in, into position roughly. Um, now I'm just going to see how these. Um, how these buzz bar links sort of go in. Um, because they, they, the CTs bolt onto them basically and nick a feed off of it. Um, 
on the load side, so obviously when you isolate this switch it kills it. Um, but yeah, so we uh, we want to bolt on at the, the most convenient point. Um, and then yeah, the buzz bar we're working with is just three uh, larger links, and then we just got this little copper packer as well, and that just bridges a little gap, I guess, um, where they don't quite line up. Um, but yeah, they all get bolted together and obviously have a combined rating rather than individually. Um, so yeah, I think it's just for manufacturing sort of purposes. Um, so you could just make all those links and then you just bolt them together, depending on how you know the rating that you need, rather than making loads of different bespoke bits of copper and what have you. Um, right, so let's get that. Let's get that on. Bolts through. I'm guessing that's where we want to go on actually. Right, so let's get this other one in. One oh two oh three, so yeah. Guess. Sort of jump on there like so. Get that. That's semi tight. And then we'll neaten them up afterwards. We'll just have them. Falling through onto each. Um, in fact, that's going to go like that. So I might even just do them all the same, just for my OCD. So that around that way. Let's cut that tire out. So that around there. Do the same with the others but in my experience it's really hard to tighten these up when you um, when you have all of the buzz bar in so yeah we'll, uh, we'll get this first one tightened up get the torque wrench out get this first one tightened up and then we'll move on to to the next couple um, and then we can we can put this all in and, and put it all to bed then so yeah i'll just go grab the, grab the torque wrench Right, so Hager specify uh, for the M12 uh, terminations a torque rating of 45 to 65 newton meters. So we're going to jump up uh, to 65. Uh, there we go, press OK. We're going the right way, you're on there, yeah? Just save that then, and then jump down onto the bottom one, bro. Seven, so we'll save that. Cool. Right, I'm going to get the other ones in, mate, and I'll give you a shout. Mm -mm. 
So just going back to this, what we're doing is we're talking them up to the correct value, then we're just pressing this save button. And what that means is when we get back to the office to do all the certification, we can use the one key app to just download these talk values and accompany a certificate with the um, you know with the IC and all that sort of stuff so that we can you know guarantee the Hager warranty and show you know we've installed it to manufacturer's instructions and all that sort of stuff. With the um, with the hands, you know, like the torque screwdrivers and the other torque wrenches, we just have a sort of blank certificate. We just write it in and sign it off um, and, you know, uh, add copies of like our calibration certificates for them and all that sort of stuff. Um, but what's cool about this one is for the bigger stuff, you can just, yeah, save it all and that. And I think that's the way it's going to go. Um, they'll start specifying it on, on test results and, and test sheets and stuff. Um, but yeah, at the minute, nothing sort of specified so yeah we'll do these um these carp nuts up the top we'll do them up afterwards they're also like carriage bolts so for anyone who doesn't know carriage bolts got a sort of domed head and then it's got that square sort of profile there and the buzz bar's got a square cut out as well so it sort of holds itself when it comes to tightening it up so they're real easy to use but um yeah they're not all like that unfortunately um, so yeah, those are at a lower value. I think those are at 22 newton meters. So yeah, those will get done afterwards. Uh, right, so get bolts in. There we go. Right, Cam, my glamorous assistant. It's that time again. Yeah, Spin the nut. Happy? Okay. Save that. Nice one, mate. I'll give you another shout in a sec. Cammy, it's that time again.
Excuse me. So now we're going to drop down to 22 newton meters. And just do these carp nuts up, which are a much smaller head, are they? Right, so now I'm just going to get these tightened up. Do it in the same order as the other ones that we know we're working back to front. Um, the lower you go with this, the more um, harder it is to get it bang on. The slightest movement can just send it over, so it's not too bad when you're in the 60s or the 80s or whatever. But when you're real low, it can be quite hard. Cool. There we go. So that's that all talked up. I'm just going to fiddle with these cables and get them all sort of coming out at the same angle and what have you, just for my OCD. And then, um, yeah, we'll look at putting the neutral way onto here. And I think that's it for the metering. So we'll start getting the shrouds back on this buzz bar, getting all that covered up, um, and moving on to the next bit. Right, cool. So now, let's get a Phillips and get this cover back on. I've got two different buzz bar shrouds, but I'm pretty sure the one I'm about to fit is the one we want, but we'll, um, we'll soon find out if not. Um, that is a terrible design. Why would you not have that completely open? I'm never gonna get that nut. <laughs> never gonna get that screw again. I think there's spares anyway. screwed back and that is us done in the uh, in the top half of this switch so now I'm probably going to carry on with the rest of the CT sort of kit um, I'll get the CTs themselves mounted and then um, after that we'll have a look at the bottom of this um, I think there's some guards and stuff that go on the bottom of the switch for ready for when our cables jump onto it. Um, and then it will just be like MCCBs and, and all the secondary metering kits and stuff. Where did that screw go? That is the big money question. I heard it down here, but I think it's, I think it's gone. Oh no, it's there. So how can I get that out? So next is this neutral connection, 13. I think I'm just going to bolt it on there because these have all been talked up to well, whatever, whatever Hager do. Um, so I don't really want to mess with them. As this is just a mountain. Um, little mountain fixing, so. No qualms of me just jumping off the back of that. that tightened up. Cool. And then that is our neutral for our CTs. Maybe I'll put a sticky pad in, but probably not going to bother to be honest with you. It looks neat enough. So, yeah, there is also a little guard which goes on here. So I'll get that on and then, I mean, I'm not too sure about all those exposed parts, so maybe, maybe this 
does go in, but it just looks a bit, a bit too small for what we're trying to do. It's definitely going to go on the bottom for sure. Um, but if it went on the top, it would be way too short, and they're both the same size. So that just goes, yeah, that goes on the bottom to cover all those up. Um, so that is the right bit of kit for that then, but yeah. I guess it don't matter if there's exposed parts there because you should be isolating the board before you take the cover off anyway. But yeah, we'll get this little plate on. It's all the little fiddly bits like that that you forget. So you'll try to get that on now. There you go. Cool. So that's back together then. Our CT uh, meter is looking pretty sweet. That wants a few sticky pads down the back of it. Um, we want to try and get that out of Dodge as well. There we go. Um, is there a hole there? I might even, yeah, do a bit of that. Send it through here. Oh, I've got a wally. Get a few, few of these sticky pads. On. Go. Let's get this tied to it. Right, so this current input cable for this um, for the for the meter um, is just an RJ45 cable, basically. Um, so I've sticky padded it along here, and then it just goes in like so. It's a bit tight for my liking, but they will pass through there. Um, I'll just have to watch that cable. Maybe leave it unplugged until um, the cables are through it but that's basically what we're doing it's not ideal like I say we'd normally have an enclosure of that nicely mounted below and, and all that sort of stuff but yeah we're just working with what we got um, so yeah I'm going to hold that there mark either side on those terminals and then just cut a bolt it through basically to this um, to this assembly it's all sealed and, and what have you um, so yeah and then I'll explain how this works in a sec as well once it's bolted through.
Cool, so I'm just gonna give that a sec to dry, then we'll get that bolted through. And then it is, um, yeah, it is the other CTs and what have you up there. Um, in the meantime, I think I'll try um, badly explain how current transformers work. Right, current transformers. So um, they're very, very similar to normal transformers. So I'll just show you what one of them looks like. Again, this is real basic, real layman's. There's a lot more science and what have you to it than what I'm going to show you, but this is it in principle. Um, so transformer has a magnetic core, and then it has a primary winding, P, and then it has a secondary winding, secondary. Um, so what you can do is you can put an input voltage of say 3000 and then due to the windings and the magnetic core and all that science um, you can make it output a voltage of say 400 volts and that's how you know HV transformers and any sort of tra 110 transformers that's how they work in principle. A current transformer is very very similar. So you have a magnetic core, which is those squares that you see on the CTs, um, but you just have a secondary winding like so. The primary is actually the cable passing through the current transformer. Um, so, like that, sorry. Make it look some, like, something like a current transformer. Um, so that is your primary, so that's obviously gonna give off a magnetic field and all that sort of inductance science. Um, and what you can then have is, say if we have 630 amps running through this, um, I'd be surprised, but if we did, this current transformer is gonna transform that down to 0 0.0, 0, 0 let's just say 6.3, just for easy maths. Um, that's then gonna get sent to our meter and our meter is going to be calibrated with these CTs, with the supply characteristics and all that sort of stuff to know that this is a small fraction of what the actual current is. And then when it displays the current value on the screen of the meter, it's going to know to multiply this by whatever it needs to, to show 630 amps. And that is basically it. These also show voltage, which um, is just tails straight off the buzz bar, uh, L1. L2, L3, um, so the meter will display voltage, um, and yeah, it just, you know, you can obviously meter the supply, um, sort out bills and stuff with tenants, and also keep an eye on what you're pulling and stuff like that. Um, like I say, there's a lot more science to it with the inductance and the and the windings and all that sort of stuff, but in principle, in layman's terms, for anyone just installing this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, this is what you're looking at. I'll just show you practically what we're working with. So this is our... Um, CT pack for our incomers so the cables are going to pass through like so um, you've got the magnetic cores in there and then our secondary windings will be here or something um, they're going to get sent down this RJ45 cable so like I say a real low current because they're just using this as the as the cable in and then it's going to come up here to our meter our meter is then like I say going to know to convert that real real small value up to you know whatever it needs to be to you know be a true representation of the current that's flowing through here um, and then the voltage is off of these so you've got voltage in um, which passes through these fuses and then we've got these little cables here which go onto there that's also what powers the meter as well i believe so um, yeah that is it in principle like i say there's a lot more science to it and technical stuff that i'm sure i'll get corrected on but yeah, for the layman, for the basic installer, that is what you're looking at with um, metering kits and current transformers. Lovely.
better. Sweet. All right, so that's that mounted. So now we'll look at mounting the MCCBs up top. Right, so I'm just gonna get these MCCBs mounted. So they face this way. Um, they need to be tightened up to 6.6 .6 newton meters. Um, before and though, I'm probably just gonna get the bolts in just to hold them in place and then we'll get them torqued up. Um, so I'm gonna have the 100 amp here, allow me to pass through this hole onto the CTs. I'm gonna leave a blank space here. Then I'm gonna have the 80 amps that we can pass through the, the bottom of this slot. And then we'll have the 63 amp here passing through the center of this slot. That also works really well because our 63 amp, the MCCB, um, the maximum ZS is still too low for the for the cable. So we're gonna take it through a 63 amp MCCB, then send it through some BS88s, which are a lot more tolerable, a lot more higher. Um, I can't remember the exact values, but we worked it out and with 63 amp BS88s, and um, that submain passed. Again, it's not a lot of capacity and stuff like that, but we're working with existing supplies. So yeah, if you remember all that stuff from the validations video, I'll put it here if not. But yeah, if you remember all that stuff from the validations video, that's sort of what we went through. And then, yeah, that's why we've got this big old enclosure up top um, with some BS88s in it. But yeah, I'm gonna get these bolted through, we'll get them all tightened up, and then we'll look at doing all the CTs in here. On there, these tighten through. There we go, so that's one. Next one's going to go here. Right, so I've got my torque wrench set to 6.6 .6 newton meters. Um, I am probably just gonna loosely tighten these up just to make life a little bit easier. So they're all talked up, they're all ready to go. So now we can start looking at the metering kits inside this enclosure um, and where the CTs sit and all that sort of stuff. 
So it's really important to get these facing the right way around. So they do come with arrows and that's the way the current is going as in, you know, the end point. So we're coming out of our breaker and going towards our board. So we want to come through this way because um, that's the direction that the currents go in. And obviously that dictates your magnetic field and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's really important to get them the right way around. Otherwise they just simply won't work. So this is our 60 amp one. So that's going to go up here. I'll just check because they do break so easily. Um, just clip on. There we go. And then we want to get that lined through like so. Um, and then we want to get this one on again, facing the right way. And that wants to go about there. And then this one wants to go further down. Again, arrows facing the right way. Wants to go about there. Cool. So I'm probably going to be really particular and um, laser these through. <laughs> Just sat there, Bob on. Um, and then these are quite tight, but they do still slide around if you want them to. Um, so I might put in, I think I've got some dim rail earth ones. I'll just screw them in just to keep them tight. You can move them around like so, so I'm just gonna try and pin them um, as tight as possible. Right, so um, I very foolishly didn't look at this CT pack um, before getting this far, but basically this DIN rail goes here. Um, you then have a plug and play connector which goes into the first meter and then it's daisy chained throughout. Um, and then these bolt onto the buzz bar yet again. Um, so I'm gonna have to have all that off, uh, probably do the bottom bolts this time, loosen them off, re them back up and yeah, do all that. But um, yeah, I know for next time. So I'm gonna get this screwed in, start dressing these round and then um, yeah, we've got to pick up a neutral as well. So I'll probably nick that off of here or something. Get that mounted there and start plugging in all the meter kits um, up the side. Right, so I've just had this off. I've got these bolted on. <laughs> um, I've also moved these to uh, the bolts I shouldn't just for symmetricality and just for to smarten it all up a bit. So yeah, I'm gonna get this center cover back on now. And then, um, yeah, we'll look at getting this into the plug and play. Um, a few sticky pads on these just to tidy them up. Um, and that should be this area put to bed now, hopefully. Um, so yeah, get the cover on. Right, so I've just peeled the covers off of these so that I can get these slotted through and then these little clips just um, like that and then you just lock them against the front of the cabinet and they're just like little, um, you get them on like compact light fittings and stuff, very very similar to that. Um, and then I've just some two that have just fallen to pieces so let's try to get these sorted. loosely held in there like so. Um, so I'm gonna get all of the meters clipped in and then we'll start linking out all of the, um, the power cables and, and all that sort of stuff. Let's, let's do the next one So this one, still got the seals on it by the looks of it, he says, but it's missing the brackets. So for now, the packet was just open. Um, so for now, I'm gonna nip the two off of an existing one and then we'll have to um, Get that sorted out by Hager so I can just come and clip them back in uh, before we're missing, clip them in at a later date. Ok, 
Okay, right. Um, so, we want to take this one to the first metre. But we want to be able to get the door open and closed with all this cabling in place. So we just want to be smart about where we leave our slack and do it in such a way that it doesn't stop the panel from shutting. Voltage cables just going across. Um, so I'll get that out of the way. So that is going to be this one. With a very tight clip on it. And that's going to be the input for this. Where's our other one? So again, then we're going to come out of this one and go into our final one up here. Let's get those on, and then now I just want to do my best to um, to neaten these up, um, which is going to be interesting. Maybe we do something like that. Uh, but we'll start with some sticky pads, very similar to what I've done before. Right, cool. So let's get all these tie wraps cut. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, could be better, could be better. Um, but yeah, so just to take you through then, we've got our voltage to meet our fuses here, coming through via some sticky pads around the back of here. We're gonna have sub mains passing through here, so I wanna keep it as out of the way as possible. Um, sticky pad there, load of slack here, just so you can open and close the door with no dramas. Um, and then we go into our first meter, we come out of our first meter, into the voltage in on our second meter, then we come out the voltage out of our second meter up and into the voltage in of our third meter. Um, so yeah, a few sticky pads, just trying to neaten it up. Um, it's not perfect, but yeah, it's as good as it's gonna get. Um, so yeah, now we've got to get these locked in place. Um, like I said, I'm gonna laser them through and then lock them in place. And then it's getting the RJ45 cables from here to the meters. I might leave that until the sub mains are in and stuff anyway, because they might just get damaged. But I'm just going to see how that works and more importantly, get these all lined through exactly where I want them. Right, cool. So I've got a laser running through um, L1 of this and L1 of that. So I'm just going to use these little um, dim rail earth connectors. Not what you should be using. You can get proper stops that screw down, but this is all the wholesale I had on short notice. Um, so it's going to do the job. The difference between these and other dim rails, that's, that's what we wanted. Stops like this that actually screw down. Um, What's good about the earth ones is they also clamp down as well um, to provide earth continuity through the dim rails. So we're not using them for that, but yeah, we just want them in there to stop these moving about basically. Should really come with the panel with the, with the CTs, but they don't basically. So um, yeah, maybe it's an optional extra or something. But um, yeah, we're just gonna fit these just to hold it all in place. So I'm gonna do that now. Right, so that is us all done for today. Um, we've been busy. We've got this in now. Um, so this is just a joint for a cable that went into this panel. Um, so in preparation for tomorrow, we've just done the joint. Um, it's gonna get fixed to this uni properly just to support the torpedo rather than having it just, do you know what I mean, floating in the dirt. That's gonna get cleated along the back round and then that'll get glanded in. Um, panel's all built. So like I showed you earlier, we've got uh, incoming meter in and then secondary meter in all this is tied in ready to go looking sweet 
uh, that's all mounted up there, bushed through. And uh, yeah, it's just at a point to get these 185s in uh, tomorrow. So we'll get all them lugged in round. This is getting turned off, so that should make for a good video. So as I was saying, guys, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a rush to get all this built for tomorrow. Tomorrow, this video is probably gonna be even worse just because we've got loads on, quite high pressure. We've got to get done, um, but I'll try film as much as I can for you guys tomorrow. Um, yeah, really, really happy with the panel. It's not quite done yet. Obviously, we've got to get all the feeds in and what have you, um, and then it really starts to take shape, but we've got all the gubbins in and all the guts and stuff, um, and it's starting to look a bit like a, like a main setup. Um, but yeah, as always, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe and hit that bell button. Check out that Tradeify link and also check out my tool shop loadout. Um, so if you don't know, I've got a tool shop, www.loadout.shop. Loads of electricians and technicians tools, all sorts of cool stuff. A lot of the stuff you see in the videos are on there as well. Um, so yeah, make sure you check that out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next Sunday at six. Bye.